My guest today is Jeremy Miller. Jeremy, how you doing? Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks, Dick. Uh, thanks for finally being on my show. I've been hoping to get you on for a long time. Oh, well, I, I see you at conferences once in a while. And I, I know, and I was, I've finally out. worked out the nerve to ask you. Well, thanks for asking <laughs> me. What, uh, what do you do? So I am a, um, I'm a software architect at a consulting company and custom software development shop in Austin called Calavista. Austin's a great city. It's a great place to live. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, you're speaking here at Code Mesh on what? So I did a workshop yesterday on uh, succeeding with automated testing in .NET. Okay. And I'm done. And you're done with all. Oh, congratulations I on that. I am done with everything. Well, you thought you were done, but let's talk about it some more. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, automated testing. Um, tell me about automated testing. Has it, has it changed from um, to when it became .NET Core to when it became when it was just uh, what a .NET Classic or whatever? They so, call it? so I, I would argue that automated testing has gotten a lot more effective, uh, a lot, lot more efficient and easier with the move from it's called ASP.NET Classic to ASP.NET Core. Okay, why is that? So core is a lot more modular, but the single biggest win is your ability to spin up your full ASP.NET core system in memory, in process. You mm -hmm. don't have to go deploy it to IIS, or you don't have to manually run the IIS Express and then go off over somewhere to the side and run things. Hmm. From in just a normal X unit test, I can spin up my application. I could use Kestrel, or there's some other options I think you and I are going to talk about. Yeah. And I can run my entire application in process, run HP requests through it, and see what happens. But most importantly, when I do that, if it fails, I can change my code and just rerun the test. As fast. As many times as I want. So the feedback cycle is much, much quicker. Hmm, okay. Is this equivalent to, when you say running in memory, is that essentially the equivalent of uh, pressing F5 and running it that way? Yes, yes. Okay. But we're automating that process. But doing it through like an X unit or MS test. Right, automating it yeah. so that the test test harness can do that. Yes. Yeah, and you mentioned Kestrel. What does Kestrel do? So Kestrel is an in-memory, is, well, it is the primary web server for ASP.NET Core. Okay. Uh, in production, you would still, it would still be running inside of IIS, but IIS is really just handling permissions and some caching. Okay. Kestrel's doing the real work. What's awesome about Kestrel is we can spin it up just in regular .NET code. Host an embedded web server just like every other platform. Or it seems like every other web platform could. Okay. Tell me about some of the other tools you use when you're doing automated testing of ASP.NET. So I work on a project um, and do get to use this at work called Alba. That's a library that's, that's a helper to test mm -hmm. HTTP methods hmm. in .NET Core. Okay. So that surrounds, so ASP.NET Core provides a facility called Test Server hmm. that acts as a replacement for Kestrel, lighter weight that's, that's good for testing, but it's very low level. You're right down to the bits, you're streaming text into the raw requests and response. Okay. Alba sits, the newest version of Alba as of this morning, oh. Alba 3, um, wraps, wraps the test server, still allows you to use it raw, but it wraps it and provides a lot of facilities to handle a lot of the really common tasks. Like what I really am doing is I'm posting this C sharp object. I want it to be serialized to JSON posted to this URL. Okay. And when it comes back, I want to do things like say, I just assert that the status code came back was 200. Okay. Um, I expected this content type header when it came back and maybe a cookie to be set. And then I want you to fetch the re response body back as I know that it's going to be JSON as this other .NET type. Okay. So as a tester coding this, I can work with my nice, clean C-sharp classes, uh, have IntelliSense all the way through, mm -hmm. but I'm still doing the real real web request. I see. All right. So it, it takes care of some of that plumbing, like converting a C-sharp object into a JSON object, for example. Yes. Which is non-trivial, but... Even with tools, you still have to write some code. To yeah, it. this just takes care. Take of away it. the laboriousness, yeah, and then make your make your test be more readable. Hell Get rid of that yeah. test that code noise, so you can see what is it that's yeah, really focus happening. on what so it's supported to, the, to what you're testing. Uh, so now, help me understand: is uh, does Alba a replacement for things like X unit and N unit and MS test, or does it sit on top of those tools? So it would sit on top. Okay. So your N unit, X unit, MS test, your tests would would call and use Alba. Oh, okay. Is, but Alba is specific for um, 
you said HTTP, but I think in this case we're talking mostly about web services, right? Like mm. calling, calling web API if it's yeah, mostly about we web still, services. Do we still call it a web API now that it's .NET Core. Uh, the, the template name still calls calls it okay. a web API. Uh, yeah, everything's overloaded. Uh, got it. Okay. Uh, web API and MVC have been merged now. That's why. I'm asking. Cor correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Um, so, are you are you're using this? Is this tool specific to .NET Core, or did it exist, uh, and is it useful in the, the, the classic .NET? So th this came out of a, a much earlier project back in the, the pre-core days, but today um, Al Alba has has direct coupling to ASP.NET Core. Okay. So only ASP.NET Core 2.1 and above now. Oh, interesting. So the, to take advantage of this, to take full advantage of this, you really need to be using the latest versions. Of yes, um, core hasn't been the most stable thing, mm -hmm. and every advance in in the version has been breaking Alba every time. So I haven't been able to to keep the backwards compatibility. Uh, okay, are, are you part of? Are you maintaining Alba as well? Yes, I, I'm. I'm the primary maintainer. I, I do. Okay. I do have help. A former colleague. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. So, a former colleague named Joe, Joe McBride's done a lot, and I, I've had some help from other contributors as well. That sounds like you're. This is hump, like your uh, four thousandth open source project that you created. Is that right? <laughs> um, I, I Tell me about some of your open source projects. Some of them oh, have become really successful and really famous. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't know that. Uh, so the big one I think people would have heard of is. Um, so I wrote Structure Map, that was the first production ready IOC container for .NET. Hmm. Uh, and so that was back in, that first went live in 2004. Wow. Uh, but folks still use the latest version. Uh, I have worked for about 10, 12 years on a tool called Storyteller that it's a lot like a Cucumber tool. It's for business facing automated acceptance tests. Hmm, okay. uh, and then, uh, one of the other big ones is is a library called Martin, but with an E, like the the you know the the animal. Well, you're from the upper Midwest. I'm from uh, Detroit originally. Okay, so the weasel-like animals. <laughs> so um, Martin is a library that allows you to use the Postgres database to take advantage of their their outstanding JSON support mm -hmm. and treat it like it's a document database. Okay. With link provider and all the good stuff you expect. Okay, so you can use those features, or if you wanted to migrate from a document database, it makes it separate. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, very cool. Um, let's get back to the testing here, because I know that's what you're focused on today. What what else should we? Uh, is there something we haven't covered that we should? Uh, so we were going to talk about uh, modularity or just how core is is better. Yeah, better so for testability. You, you started with that actually. You said that uh, it's better at it's more testable. I think I, I'm paraphrasing. Here, I think so. That uh, yeah, expand on that, please. So um, I think Microsoft have a little bit of a tortured history with modularity. That we've been torturing you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, taking is you know one extreme web forms to what where are we at in, uh, now. Where, yeah, like web forms. A lot of things were tightly coupled in there. Yes, yeah. yes. I got to sit out the web forms year somehow. I, I, I moved I to Win forms. I'm not a fan of web forms. I, I was I was really excited when MVC came out. Me too. Because, me too. Um, uh, well, this is an aside. Sorry, folks. <laughs> that whole page load and page render and page pre render that's in web forms. There is nothing like that in HTTP at all. That's all Jerry rigged to make it, uh, yes, it easier was. for uh, uh, VB form developers to, <laughs> to migrate. And here I'm, I'm <laughs> going to I'm going to lose my credibility with your listeners, but uh, the thing that really hooked me and got me into coding was. Uh, doing ASP Classic. Uh -huh. That's when, what I did. Yeah. Okay, so when you would start with an Access, uh, you'd let Access ninety seven auto generate an ASP Classic page and then go oh, change it. I didn't it. do that. No, I use Visual Interdev. Yeah. That. Oh, I use Visual Interdev a lot too. Okay. Um, so Web Forms was, to me felt like, oh my god, stuff that used to be easy is now hard. Right. But so Core is very modular. It, it looks a lot, and I'm biased, but it looks a lot like what. Some many of the open source alternatives were five to ten years ago. Okay, um, it's very modular. Uh, they are keeping the responsibilities in, and what Scott Hanselman calls the right size Legos. Okay, of I can swap in or out something that only has the responsibility for security. Hmm. I can use this idea of middleware to let me go do my work, 
And but when I need to come back and put security on, I can wrap security middleware that'll handle those kind of cross cutting concerns. But I have a place to do that that keeps all that gunky code from running into every controller method. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, I don't understand. So there's, this is useful. Uh, testing is one place where this is useful. If you're not testing security, then it, maybe it doesn't make sense to have all that heavy security calls in there. Definitely that. that. You can test exactly what you're trying to test. Uh, but also, if you wanted to change security, you don't risk touching all these other yes. bits of code. Well, well, and then trying to work in an agile fashion, mm -hmm. you know, in the extreme programming days, they've talked about this idea of reversibility of if it's easy for me to change my mind or it's easy for me to retrofit in some kind of technical concern later, I don't, I don't need to worry about it. Um, so I, not to say that security is not important, folks. Yeah, well, I'm just using security as, a, as one example. Of sure. This. It security, could be logging. It could be anything. Yes. If, if you can drop in middleware around it or action filters, mm -hmm. um, drop that in later, I don't have to think of it up front. I can focus on core business functionality and know that I can retrofit that stuff in no problem later. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so what, uh, you doing a lot of speaking these days? Uh, I haven't so much. Uh, my wife and I had a baby about two years ago. Congratulations. Oh, well, thank Belatedly. you. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is my first big conference since we decided it, it was okay for me to start going out again. Oh, this is your getting back into it. Yes, it oh, is. Awesome. All right. Uh, have you got some more lined up? Uh, I'll be at NDC London uh -huh. uh, at the end of January this year. Excellent. Jeremy, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me, David. In my talk yesterday, uh, I had an example where we are talking about somebody doing manual testing where they, they had to make the software go and it would call one of those old nerdy 90s flip phones. Uh -huh. And just thinking, like, watching old episodes of Friends, how much better our technology is uh, today. Yeah. <laughs>